Hi, welcome to the Bird Art Collection Connection. My name is Terry Beth Smith, and I'm the Educational Sales Manager for Scholastic. I will pre be presenting the top new exciting titles for Scholastic for 2023. We will be beginning with picture books for Scholastic. The first title I'm going to talk about is When You Can Swim, illustrated and authored by Jack Wong. This is his debut picture book title, and we will have more coming from Jack, and we're very excited to have him on our list. When You Can Swim takes text and illustrations, and they merge seamlessly to illuminate all the ways swimming animates the senses. This book has received three star reviews, and I want to read a little bit from the book page star review. It discusses the author's note that's at the back of, back of the book title, and it is striking in its tenderness as it explains Jack's hesitancy as an immigrated kid in Canada to swim in all the public pools. It is his desire to tell a story with differently colored characters because representation is powerful. Jack grew up hearing about stories from his grandmother who swam in India. However, his mother in China was discouraged to swim and never learned to swim. So he had kind of had these mixed feelings about it. Um, and the next couple of slides will show some beautiful illustrations from this title. When You Can Swim by Jack Wong. We Are Here, an All Because You Matter book by Tammy Charles and illustrated by Brian Collier. Tammy and Brian are the powerhouse team that brought you All Because You Matter, and now we have We Are Here. This lyrical affirmation is bursting with love. We Are Here is a poignant story about black and brown heritage and community. It is the follow-up to All Because You Matter, and we will have one more title from this awesome duo, Stronger Together. I highly encourage you to look at the painted illustrations from Brian Collier that are incredible. The sample page from We Are Here. All we need in love is love and a really soft pillow is from Peter H. Reynolds and his son, Henry Rocket Reynolds. It is a heartfelt celebration of love that follows Poppy and Little One as they discuss what is really important in life. It is tender and full of optimism. And if you ask me, Peter H. Reynolds is the best for social emotional learning. sample of the lovely illustrations from All We Need is Love and a really soft pillow. I Am My Ancestors' Wildest Dreams, an exciting new picture book from Tunisia Moore and illustrated by Robert Paul Jr. This book follows a child as they go around and meet black leaders from sports to entertainment to law to leadership um, for each person that this child meets, it is about becoming anything that you want to become. There are 10 people uh, that they meet, and there's a little bit of back matter on each one. It includes Kobe Bryant, John Lewis, Chadwick Boseman, Ralph Ellison, Muhammad Ali, Dr. Charles Drew, Tupac, Biggie, Thurgood Marshall, and Dipsy Hustle. And the next slide is going to show you some of these wonderful, wonderful illustrations. Um, and the text goes along perfectly. So as you look at these pictures, I'm going to read from the first page of this book. I am flat, from my crown down to the kicks on my feet. I am my ancestors' wildest dreams. Holding Her Own, The Exceptional Life of Jackie Orms by Tracy Todd and illustrated by Shannon Wright. This wonderful nonfiction biography explores the life of Jackie Orms. His groundbreaking cartoons became some of the first empowering depictions of black women in America. This has received three star reviews already, and on the next page you will get to see some of the wonderful illustrations uh, that really focus on what Jackie Orms uh, did and who she was. Holding her own, the life of Jackie Orms. Lovita wore pants, the story of a Mexican freedom fighter, 
is brought to us from Ayada Salazar and Molly Mendoza. The story follows Jovita Valdivinos, who was truly a Mexican freedom fighter. She uh, wanted to join her brothers and her father in fighting the Cristero War, uh, but she was told she could not because she was a woman, so she dressed up as a man and joined the war. So she is considered um, Mexico's Joan of Arc. Some stunning illustrations from Jovita War Paintings. And now we're moving on to middle grade books. To start middle grade, we will begin with Big Tree by Brian Selznick. This 528-page epic novel uh, includes over 200 pictures and follows the life of two seeds and saplings that travel throughout time and space, and the fate of the world can very well may depend on if they can survive. The title has received multiple star reviews. It is truly a cinematic journey as you follow these seeds and saplings uh, as the world truly evolves. Just a few of the stunning illustrations from Brian Selznick's Big Tree. New York Times bestselling author Jennifer Nielsen brings us Iceberg. It is this thrilling story of Hazel Rathbert who stares away on the board of the Titanic and finds herself, of course, caught in the desperate struggle to survive the ship as it strikes an iceberg. Jennifer Nielsen is a masterful storyteller, and the next slide will show just her fantastic list of middle grade historical fiction novels. Here you can see uh, with the addition of Iceberg, uh, we just have a whole timeline that Jennifer Nielsen feel, filled, fills a void for in historical fiction, and they're all really fantastic. Uh, I encourage you to really check them out. The Beautiful Something Else by Ashvin Otterley. When we were putting together these slides and presentations, uh, Erica asked us to really call out our favorites and something you might not find otherwise. Well, this is my favorite of 2023 from Scholastic. The Beautiful Something Else is the story of Sparrow, who feels like she must be the perfect daughter. Her mother is falling apart, and Sparrow feels like she must not get upset, she must not be weird, and she must not stand out in any of the unusual ways. Well, that's not possible for Sparrow, and it's not possible for her life. As her mother does fall apart and it does deal with addiction, Sparrow goes to live with family that she doesn't really know and is transported to a world where everyone accepts everyone for who they are. And that is a whole new and fantastical world for Sparrow. As she tries to figure out her feelings, and she's not really feeling like a girl or a boy, um, and where she is non-binary in a binary world. This, be this book is beautiful. Uh, the cover is fantastic, and I think it's a must-read for everyone. To round out middle grade for Scholastic, we have Zombie Season. This will be the first of a series from Justin Weinberger. This title is follows three um, kids as the zombie apocalypse comes in California, and they're trying to find uh, one of the girl's fathers who has gone missing. It is action-packed, full of environmental themes, and to top it all off, there will be a online game on Roblox that allows the reader to not only read, but then also go fight the zombies themselves. I highly encourage you to pick it up. Really fun, fast-paced, and uh, again, it will be part of the series. It's no surprise that graphic novels and manga are huge um, these days, and so we will move on to our, our graphics list. You probably do not have to 
introduce you to uh, the wonderful world of Dave Pilkey. Uh, but I did want to just comment, we do have a new Dogman 11 um, that just came out, and we will have new Dogman publishing in the spring uh, for the next cu couple of years, and then in the fall we will have the Cat Kid Comic Club series. So you get two Dave Pilkeys uh, moving forward. A new, very exciting uh, book that we have coming in. We have three in the series from Max Ogle, uh, Four Eyes, really takes the middle school life of a young boy as he navigates not only middle school, uh, but getting glasses. Um, we have, again, two more signed up with Rex Ogle. Uh, one is definitely going to deal with Affie, um, and then the other one, uh, is to be determined, um, but these are definitely in line with the Randy Telgemeier books and just really, really, really exciting. Parachute Kids, a graphic novel um, from Buddy Tang. This is an extraordinary story about three kids living on their own as undocumented new immigrants. This is inspired by Betty's actual true childhood experience, excuse me, experience as a parachute kid. This is her debut as an author. Switched from Megan Wagner Lloyd and illustrated by Michelle Nutter from the Eisner nominated duo beside, behind the instant bestseller Allergic. Uh, if you who haven't checked out a highly allergic, I highly encourage you to check out comes a new graphic novel about Finding your own way and your own space when you are in a family of nine. And coming for, as an only child, uh, this is a whole new take on growing up. Sunshine by Derek Kozatska. This is a older YA graphic novel. The second nonfiction graphic novel we've had from Jared. Uh, the first one, Hey Kiddo. And this one is Sunshine, about Jared's life, where he volunteers as a camp counselor at a summer camp for children with chronic illness. It is heartbreaking, heartwarming, and a fantastic companion to hate him. Moving right along to YA. I am thrilled to announce the debut of Neil Schusterman in graphic novels, Courage to Dream, Tales of Hope in the Holocaust. This is National Book Award winner Neil Schusterman's incredible account exploring the Holocaust through surreal vision and folklore and tales uh, that helped get people through the Holocaust. Um, there's five narrative stories in this, and I highly, highly encourage you to read the author's note at the beginning of the book. It really explains uh, what this nuanced title is about. Oh. It is the fall of Alice Oseman. Alice Oseman is the absolute best-selling author of The Heartstopper series of graphic novels uh, that were also made into a Netflix show, and the new Netflix show will, will be out hopefully this fall. And we do have a fifth brand new Heartstopper novel coming uh, this fall. It was a late edition. We also have this fall Solitaire, which was Alice's first novel uh, that she put out in the UK, and it is the story of Tori, who introduces us to Nick and Charlie, who are the main characters in Heartstopper. Very, very much anticipated to have this now in the US. And again, Alice is a rock star and we can't have enough of her. Beholder from Ryan LaSala. Ryan LaSala jumped onto the scene with his first novel, The Honeys. And Beholder, in my opinion, is even better. It is definitely young adult, higher end young adult. Uh, if you have seen the show, The Black Mirror, this could be a show, 
right in that that series from them. It is the story of a young man who has a chilling supernatural ability that when he can look into a mirror, he can rewind and see what happened. Uh, this is a curse. And maybe possibly a blessing as he is fighting for his life, um, as he is accused of a murder, well, multiple murders, and he has to really delve into what this ability means to him and the world that he thinks he lives in. Continuing along in YA, a wonderful historical fiction novel coming from Shan Cameron. She was a light in hidden places, as well as Bluebird and her last one, Artifice, as, uh, takes place during World War II in Amsterdam, following a young girl named Ellie, who is trying to survive for her family, um, as well as helping get young Jewish children out of Amsterdam. And she does this through art forgery and selling this art to Nazi soldiers. Um, it is based on Han van Meerden, who actually uh, was an art forger um, and did sell multiple paintings to uh, Nazi soldiers and did use that money um, to, to free a variety of people. Uh, I highly encourage you to read this. It is fast paced, it is incredible. Um, and just a wonderful, wonderful read. And finally, in YA, we have this Indian kid, a Native American memoir, Eddie Chipotle. This is nonfiction, an autobiography from award winning author Eddie Chipotle as he recounts his experience growing up in rural Oklahoma. It takes him from boyhood um, all the way through manhood. Um, Eddie was Cherokee and Creek. And this is his account of his his life, um, acknowledging his roots um, and how they impacted him and, and actually the wonderful childhood that he had and the love that he experienced. I wanted to touch on just a few leveled readers that Scholastic has. Uh, we have What If You Had Animal Eyes and Everything Awesome About Dangerous Dinosaurs. Uh, the first is from Sandra Markle, and this was a lot of books that we had uh, that were that were nonfiction, and now we're making in, them into level two readers. And we have two What If You Had coming uh, this fall, and we will have more in the future. And likewise, with Everything Awesome and Dangerous About Dinosaurs from Mike, Mike Lowry, we had uh, three in this series, and we will have them coming out in reader, level three reader form in the fall. And briefly to touch on our early readers, we have um, the Acorn and Branches line. Acorn books are for uh, K through two, usually very young readers. Um, it bridges that gap between the reader and a full on chapter book with all half pictures, half words. And we have a new series, The Adventure Friends, 64 pages, and it does teach navigation. And then in the branches line, which is just slightly older than Acorn, um, we have a new series coming called The Party Diaries. And this takes us through um, multicultural celebrations. Um, and the first one is an awesome orange birthday. This is an exciting new series that we have from Erin Blaby. Erin Blaby is the best-selling author of the Bad Guys series, as well as Pig, Pig the Pug and Velma the Unicorn that are picture books. But we now have Cat on the Run. These are highly illustrated uh, early chapter books, and this is all about a famous cat who might come up a little dizzy, uh, but as she is framed for a crime she did not commit, she must go on the run and figure out her innocence. And finally, I will conclude uh, with the Bob books that I'm sure you're familiar with. Uh, these help teach phonics skills and reading skills to young to young children. 
they've only been available in box sets uh, with different readers. And now we're, we, we are doing a bind up with all of those tiny, tiny little books in a, a bind up. And we do plan, so the first one we're doing is set one, beginning readers. But we do plan to do all of them. As, and I think these will be great for libraries. Thank you so much for listening to me for the last 20 minutes. I do appreciate your attention. Uh, here is my information. Uh, please reach out with any questions, concerns, and I'm happy to answer. Thanks.